This is News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with us. For the first time today, we're getting a better look at what the state believes schools should look like in the fall. We have team coverage of the plans, including what options school districts have, plus how it compares to the CDC guidelines and what doctors think of it. We start with Mark Kane, who has more on the state's education forward plan. Charlotte and Eric, these are just recommendations, and each school district will come up with their own plan based on their county health plans. The state suggests that each district be prepared to shift between in-person physically distant and virtual learning. Officials provided four examples of scheduling scenarios as part of the plan. In all scenarios, they suggest trying to reduce the teacher-student ratio to 10 students to each teacher, spreading kids out across traditional classrooms, outdoor learning spaces, and even community spaces to limit big groups. And they only have kids learning in class four days a week, with the fifth day set aside for deep cleaning, the school's teacher's development, and for independent study. So here are those examples. In one, kids are are simply in the classroom four days a week, spread out with virtual learning that fifth day. In another, all students report to class two days a week and learn virtually the other three. One example would have half of the students report to school for four days a week, while the other half learns from home. They would switch who is in school every week. And in the last scenario, only elementary school students go back to class, spread out across all district buildings. All secondary students learn virtually. Some of the recommendations we expected, like rearranging desks to be socially distant, limited sharing supplies and making sure disinfectant is widely available. And again, these examples are only recommendations. Eric and Charlotte. Mark, thank you. These state guidelines come just a month after the CDC released its own guidelines for schools. Our Gabriella Becerra joins us live to explain how the two plans compare. Gabby. The CDC and DPI plans are similar, suggesting a lot of the same guidelines to keep students physically distanced in classrooms this year. But the state plan dives a little bit deeper into what that could look like. With over 400 schools in the state, senior policy advisor Jennifer Camerood says each district has a different reality. So these guidelines might not be realistic in each setting, but they should serve as a place to start conversations with local health departments to determine what's a best fit in their community. Communities. It's something school districts are going to have to plan for now that they've learned from what happened last spring and think about what's going to work for their community in terms of learning options should they have to go to a remote or virtual setting. And one of the things that I want to stress is we do expect students back in school in the fall. Cameroon says the first plan should be what schools look like with students back and backup plans should be alternative plans if the local health department orders for schools to close. The Department of Public Instruction used the CDC guidelines kind of as a reference point in creating education forward, but they worked very closely with the Department of Health Services and Amy Reed spoke with uh, health experts to see what schools and public or schools and parents should consider. Right, public health officials have only had a few months to study this virus, but they can also apply what they know about how the flu spreads in schools. A research team at the UW has tracked flu spread in Oregon schools since 2014. They've noticed when kids go on break, like winter or spring breaks, flu-like illness numbers go down. When kids go back to school, respiratory infections rise, not just in school-aged kids, but also in the rest of society. Scientists aren't sure yet how kids going back to school will impact the coronavirus fight, but experts I talked to today said it should still be done carefully. Worst case scenario, you bring kids back together again and you don't do much. And we see things ramp up very, very rapidly and much greater than we've seen so far. One thing Tempty said he could tell from this year is when school let out in March, respiratory infections across the board decreased dramatically. He said until there is a vaccine or good treatments, social distancing or distance learning will be key. And other public health experts tell me that the need for that could change quickly as districts react to the change in case numbers. And they said that's going to require patience and grace from parents and employers as the need for kids to be home changes. Amy, thank you. We have the full DPI report on our website. 
channel3000.com and on our news app. You can download that for free in your phone's app store. All day long, we've seen scattered showers and storms throughout the area. Let's check your first warm forecast. Here is Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Eric, there's an end in sight. Uh, most of the heavier th thunderstorms are going to stay to our south for this evening. You can see on visible cloud track, lots of clouds around, so that's held temperatures down. So the strongest th thunderstorms are developing over eastern Illinois, where temperatures are warmer. The clouds and the showers have held down our temperatures, but you can still see some showers and even some heavier showers moving through the area around Darlington, heading toward the uh, western portion of Dane County. Uh, lighter showers extend back out toward the Mississippi River. But over the last four days, there have been some heavy amounts of rain over eastern Iowa and parts of southwestern Wisconsin, where anywhere from two to five inches plus of rain have come down. So flash flood watches remain in effect to 7 p.m. this evening for Grant County and areas to the south and west. Otherwise, we look at uh, temperatures right now. They're being held down because of the clouds. 70 in Madison. Temperatures are in the 60s to our north and west. Dew point temperatures are still high, but the air should dry out for tomorrow. Look for showers and thunderstorms to end overnight. Low temperatures will drop into the upper 50s. Tomorrow will be variably cloudy. It'll be less humid, but there'll still be a chance for a pop-up shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon with a high of 74. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that includes much more summer-like weather as we head toward next weekend. Gary, thank you. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway is calling for transparency in the investigation of a Sunday morning hit and run that one activist group is calling a hate crime. Madison police released dash cam and traffic camera footage from Saturday night. This happened at the intersection of University Avenue at Francis Street near Wando's Bar and Grill. Detectives say city cameras captured the hit and run and officers are using them in their investigation. One person was injured. The activist group Urban Triage has said a white supremacist intentionally hit a black woman. They want city leaders to call the incident a hate crime. And in a statement, Mayor Rhodes Conway said, quote, I fully support hate crime charges when they are warranted. And she wished for a speedy recovery for the victim. We're digging into that video. We will have more footage tonight at 6 and 10. A Madison man could face two counts of attempted homicide after police say he lit an apartment on fire as part of a domestic dispute. When Madison officers arrived at the apartment on Tree Lane this morning, they say they found a woman and her child trying to get out of the burning apartment, but 32-year-old Kentrell Blair was still inside. Police eventually pulled him from the building and took him into custody. A GoFundMe page for the victims has been set up by the Boys and Girls Club. Two University of Wisconsin-Madison athletes have tested positive for COVID-19 after returning to campus, according to the athletic department. Those students were not named. They were among 117 student athletes tested in the first wave being brought back to campus. The university says they are now self-isolating. One more person has died due to complications from the coronavirus in Wisconsin, which brings the state's total death toll to 745 people. Statewide, 25,122 people have been diagnosed with COVID-19, which is an increase of 300 cases since yesterday afternoon. Roughly 3.8% of new tests came back positive today. That is slightly down from yesterday's percentage. Some counties are seeing larger spikes in confirmed cases compared to previous weeks. La Crosse County confirmed 23 new cases and Dane County confirmed 40 more cases since yesterday afternoon. While some parts of the nation are struggling with increased cases, two major cities, Washington, D.C. and New York City, relaxed restrictions today that were put in place when the pandemic hit. Florida remains open for business despite a steady rise of COVID-19 infections. Officials there say the average age for newly diagnosed cases is dropping. The World Health Organization says more than 183,000 new coronavirus cases were recorded yesterday. That is the most in a single day since the outbreak started. During a campaign rally in Oklahoma this weekend, President Trump received some backlash for saying he ordered a slowdown in coronavirus testing because the increase in testing is showing an increase in cases. The White House leader said President Trump was just joking. But during an interview with Scripps Television this morning, the president did not back down from the claim. But did you ask to slow it down? Uh, if it did slow down, frankly, I think we're way ahead of ourselves, if you want to know the truth. We've done too good a job because every time we go up with 25 million tests, you're going to find more people. The Trump administration is currently sitting on $14 billion in congressionally authorized funds for testing and contact tracing. The White House says it is not sitting on the money and repeated its claim that the U.S. leads the world in testing. The president and vice president are both set to make stops in Wisconsin this week. Tomorrow, the vice president, Mike Pence, he'll be in Milwaukee with Education Secretary Betsy DeVos and former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. Then on Thursday, President Trump will visit Marinette. 
Home sales have dropped for the third straight month on the national level by about 10%. Yeah, the cost of homes in Madison has increased for the seventh year in a row. According to a new city assessment, values of homes here increased about 6.6% in the last year. Our Jamie Prez looked into why our housing market keeps getting more and more expensive. Jamie? The city said that this has everything to do with supply and demand, and the higher we see the prices of homes get, the more difficult it becomes for people to actually ever buy homes. The average price of a single family home in Madison is now at just over $315,000, a new all time high. Most areas in Madison have robust sales, and without fail almost, I would say, it's, it's pretty common for them, the sales to be above what we have them assessed at. Michelle Drea is Madison City Assessor. She said while we may not like it, Madison's housing prices continue to increase because the population is growing. The housing supply can't keep up and the demand for home ownership keeps increasing. Madison's known as a great city. Lots of people want to live here. If you've lived in Madison long enough, you'll hear a lot of people say that it's expensive to live here. Many people won't buy homes because of it, but there are people who do buy homes for more than the going price, which is why our trends continue the way they have been for the past seven years. You have so much competition in the market to buy homes. It's not a simple equation if you're looking at providing affordable housing. It can be more of a challenge. Uh, I think it just requires a more thoughtful approach. Several realtors told me today that it's become evident, especially in the past few weeks, that there is a gap in who is buying these homes. Those who don't have generational wealth don't have the buying power or the earning potential to ever own a home, especially if prices keep increasing. The only solution to this is one the city says it's already considering. Affordable housing is one of the um, one of Mayor Satya's priorities, so I do think that those developments are important and will increase over time. Property values also have an impact on diversity and inclusion here. Later this week, I'm working on a story about how the housing prices and the increases have an impact on minorities. All right, Jamie Perez live. Jamie, thanks. Ahead on News 3 Now at 5, the city is asking people what they think should be done with the murals that are on boarded up State Street businesses. And coming up tonight at 6, local musicians are adapting their lesson schedules to a virtual world. That story at 6. And the markets start the week, a 153.5 point jump for the Dow. The NASDAQ up 110. The S&P 500 adds about 20. We'll be right back. Save at Wild East Town Honda on over 400 new Hondas. With 0% financing for up to 60 months. Save on your favorite new Hondas at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. Today, some things do stand firm. Those you can lean on. The things that matter. And the importance of you being you. That's why, no matter the type of care you need, or the way you need it, we're here every day, safe and ready. Because wherever you are in your world, you are the focus of ours. Safe care your way. Unity Point Health Meredith, a partner of UW Health. Know how much you matter to this world. Happy 4th of July Super Sale, happening this week at the Brothers Main. Come in now for more savings on more brands, like Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Amana. We make upgrading your home more convenient at Maine with up to 18 months of 0% financing and expert-free delivery. Get more at the 4th of July Super Sale. More selection, more savings, and more satisfaction. And happy birthday, USA, from the Brothers Maine, your local store for more since 1938. Save big money on your next project with 11% off everything. Now at Menards. Create an exciting outdoor living space with Menards' great selection of concrete landscape block. Whether it's flawless landscaping, a spacious patio, or a sturdy retaining wall, there's no limit to what you can create. Straight or beveled 17-inch crest stone retaining wall blocks are just 97 cents each after 11% off. Start saving with 11% off everything. Now at Menards. Save big money. Shop Steinhoffel's 4th of July sale and get 35% off store-wide, plus an extra 5% off our quality furniture. Plus, no money down financing for 60 months and free no-contact shipping. Get amazing deals like any size Sealy mattress, 99 bucks. This sofa, 399 dollars Five-piece dining set or this queen bed, 599 dollars And get an extra 10% off all in-stock patio. Five-piece patio set, now 399 dollars So shop Steinhoffel's first during our biggest 4th of July sale ever. No one sells more. 
Wild Automotive sells more SUVs and all-wheel drives combined than any other dealer. Wild is the number one volume SUV and all-wheel drive retailer in Southeast Wisconsin. The more we sell, the more you save. WildAuto.com. State Street businesses start to open up after break-ins and vandalism earlier this month. The boarded up windows that were turned into works of art are also coming down. But those murals won't be thrown away. The city says they belong to no one and everyone and is trying to decide what to do with them. Our Amanda Quintana is live downtown with how you can give your input. Amanda? Yes, after many of these businesses were covered in graffiti or looted, these boards were put up and you can see they quickly turned into murals. Now the city did help commission some artists to do some of these murals. And since then, people have been writing into the city with ideas about where these murals should end up. Now there's a survey with some of the most popular ideas, including auctioning them off to raise money for the artists or for nonprofits, creating a temporary exhibition or donating them to schools, community centers, or museums. The overwhelming response is that people are very enthusiastic about this work and they would like it somewhere where the public can continue to see it. So they want it to live on. This is not just a moment that they want to leave behind. So ideas are putting them in community centers, government buildings, making them available so people can still absorb the message. Right now, the city is helping remove some of the art and put it in storage until it's decided what to do with them. But many of those murals are still here and some businesses are deciding to keep the art up or to incorporate it into some of their shops. Even some of the artwork here that was not commissioned by the city could be included in the future. And we do have a link to that survey on our website, Channel 3000. Amanda, thank you. After a decade of coordination, the Wilson Street parking garage is now open. The garage is at 240,000 square feet, features 560 parking stalls. It also has free bike parking as well as EV charging stations. There will be future development in above the parking garage, which will be called the Stonehouse Development. As for the Government East parking garage, city officials say demolition for that will happen in mid-July. Let's get a look at your first worn weather now. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolti with your forecast. Well, we had a weekend that had showers and thunderstorms Saturday. Most of yesterday for Father's Day was dry before showers and storms started to develop late in the afternoon into the overnight hours. And some of that rain was locally heavy. And now things will start winding down today. Flash flood watch remains in effect until 7 p.m. for Grant County, as well as areas to the uh, west and south into parts of Iowa. Uh, that's an area that got quite a bit of rain over the weekend, uh, over the last four days, the 90 six hour rainfall total shows a general three to five inches or more of rain, maybe as much as six inches over toward uh, Waterloo and Cedar Rapids, Iowa, some two to three inch amounts over central and southern Grant County into maybe uh, far south uh, southeastern Port or southwestern portions of Crawford County around Prairie du Chien. The farther east you go, though, the amount started to drop into the one to two inch range and then east of Madison, generally less than an inch of rain fell. On high resolution Doppler radar, we're not seeing much in the way of lightning anywhere around Wisconsin. There are some thunderstorms on the tail end of this line of showers across northern Illinois, but for the most part, just some brief heavy downpours with this batch of showers, a few more areas of light to moderate rain farther to the west, and then just general light rain uh, behind that. But notice there is a back edge to the rain. Uh, now approaching the lacrosse area. So with time, we'll see the uh, chances for rain probably end later on tonight. There is an outside risk of a marginal uh, isolated strong to severe thunderstorm over southeastern Wisconsin, but the severe weather threat is highest down across parts of northern Illinois where a severe thunderstorm watch is in effect. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for highs in the middle 70s the next couple of days with a drop in the humidity. There still will be some chances for some afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms as some instability aloft moves through. We start to warm up on Thursday with highs in the lower 80s and we're in the mid 80s on Friday. That's when the humidity comes back and then 
Like summer weather starts uh, Friday and lasts through the weekend and through much of next week. Temperatures right now, 60s to lower 70s, a little more sunshine farther to the west, keeping temperatures in the 70s across Minnesota. Cloud cover and the rain keeping our temperatures fairly cool. But you can see these showers and some isolated thunderstorms in Wisconsin. These are stronger thunderstorms across parts of Illinois. The jet stream briefly becoming a little more northwesterly, but notice another bulge in the jet stream developing along the western uh, coast of the United States. That's what will move eastward as we head toward the weekend and early next week and really warm up our temperatures again. Temperatures right now, generally 60s, 70s, and some middle 80s. Not seeing a lot of 90s on there until you get down into southern Kansas. Dew point temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s through Illinois. So they are pretty humid into parts of southern Wisconsin, but notice it does dry out to our north and west. And that's what we'll be looking at over the next couple of days. You can see these showers moving on out tonight. Uh, we'll see some sunshine in the morning. The clouds pop up in the afternoon with a shower or thunderstorm chance those die down in the evening once the sun goes down turn partly cloudy for tomorrow night and then we'll repeat the process again as we head into Wednesday Thursday we'll probably see more sunshine notice the winds becoming a little more easterly and then eventually southerly with time that's what will start the warm-up and take a look at the high temperatures over the next 10 days we go from below normal the next couple of days to near normal on Thursday and then above normal with highs generally in the mid to upper 80s through much of next week so for tomorrow look for some sunshine in the morning more clouds in the afternoon it will be less humid but there'll be a pop-up shower or thunderstorm chance in the afternoon and evening. Again, on future track, most of the rain tonight will move out by early tomorrow morning. We'll see some morning sunshine, the showers and storms popping up in the afternoon, dying down in the evening. And then as we head into Wednesday, again, more sunshine in the morning, pop-up showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. 7 to 10-day forecast, look for dry weather on Thursday. The humidity comes back on Friday and Saturday along with the higher temperatures. Then as the temperatures go up for next week, the rain chances go down as the warm air aloft keeps thunderstorms from developing. Just a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Highs in the upper 80s to near 90 and nighttime low temperatures generally in the upper 60s. As we take a look at first warm traffic, we've got some rain falling on the Beltline. Traffic still moving pretty steadily in both directions. We haven't seen the big traffic buildups yet since uh, uh, people have started getting back to work. There is a uh, stall in the Beltline on the eastbound Beltline near uh, Southtown Drive. Otherwise, traffic moving pretty much at the posted speed limits. And as far as travel times are concerned, we're looking at about a 15-minute commute either way on the Beltline between University Avenue and the Interstate. That's your news for now for sworn traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. Head on news for now at five. The latest on the investigation into a noose found in a NASCAR driver's garage. That's ahead at five. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Though challenges surround us, life still goes on. There's still time to dream, still plans to be made. And if you're retiring soon, still deadlines to be met. We talk with people every day who need to replace their employer benefits when they retire. We can answer your questions too, so you can feel good about the decisions you make. For a retirement benefits checklist, visit us online or call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company today. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. At Papa Murphy's, we need seriously, chop seriously, and shred seriously. Because we're serious about Tuesdays, even if you're not. Every Tuesday, get a large pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? <laughs> wow, is that really me? <laughs> they are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Celebrate this 4th of July knowing you look your best with Plexiderm. Lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says... This one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. Father, we were at home and we were screaming four minutes 34 seconds completely gone my real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera <laughs> these lines bother me 
They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great. Looks even better. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of pros, feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to, like, get rid of the bags? And yeah, you would be it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look at your genre, this is it. This 4th of July is the best time to get Plexiderm for $14.95. See it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Connect with News 3 now on Facebook Messenger to create a personalized news feed just for you. The topics you want, the day's top stories, and push alerts for breaking news all through Messenger. Learn more at channel3000.com. The FBI and Justice Department's Civil Rights Division will be investigating after a noose was found in Bubba Wallace's garage stall. In a statement, NASCAR said it was investigating after a noose was found in his team's garage stall at the Talladega Speedway, adding, we are angry and outraged. There is no place for racism in NASCAR. Wallace responded saying, today's despicable act of racism and hatred leaves me incredibly saddened and serves as a painful reminder of how much further we have to go as a society. Meanwhile, while NASCAR drivers are joining Bubba to show solidarity. Earlier today at Talladega in Alabama, NASCAR drivers pushed and walked behind Wallace's car to show an act of unity. This comes after Wallace asked NASCAR to no longer allow Confederate flags to be flown at NASCAR races and events. Well, Major League Baseball seeing yet another bump in the road after the Players Union voted against the league's latest proposal. ESPN says that vote was 33 to 5 against. The league's latest plan was a 60-game season. The Players Union's latest proposal, a 70-game season. Commissioner Rob Manfred now expects a 54 to 60-game season that would start no earlier than July 26th. Meanwhile, all MLB training camps are temporarily closed after multiple teams reported positive tests on Friday, and the league announced Saturday that a restart of spring training would only occur in teams' homes cities. A final check of your first worn forecast in just a moment. Stay with us. on over 400 new Hondas with 0% financing for up to 60 months. Save on your favorite new Hondas at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. I wanted my hepatitis C gone. I put off treating mine. Epclusa treats all main types of chronic hep C. Whatever your type, Epclusa could be your kind of cure. I just found out about mine. I knew for years. Eplusa has a 98% overall cure rate. I had no symptoms of hepatitis C. Mine caused liver damage. Eplusa is only one pill, once a day, taken with or without food for 12 weeks. Before starting Eplusa, your doctor will test if you have had hepatitis B, which may flare up and could cause serious liver problems during and after treatment. Tell your doctor if you have had hepatitis B, other liver or kidney problems, HIV or other medical conditions, and all medicines you take, including herbal supplements. Taking amiodarone with Epclusa may cause a serious slowing of your heart rate. Common side effects include headache and tiredness. Ask your doctor today if Epclusa is your kind of cure. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD, and we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Plus, we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. I don't have that. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-976-4499. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get internet from another company and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. 
I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and Internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-976-4499. Seeing the joy that people feel when they share a meal with family and friends, that's why we do this. The laughter of kids around the table, the thrill of families driving through for a treat, the delight of not having to cook, and instead, letting us safely serve you. It all comes back to taking care of each other. And for that, we'll be here with your favorites and always a smile. No one sells more. Wild Automotive sells more SUVs and all-wheel drives combined than any other dealer. Wild is the number one volume SUV and all-wheel drive retailer in Southeast Wisconsin. The more we sell, the more you save. WildAuto.com. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, new coronavirus hotspots. 18 states see an increase in hospitalizations, and Florida passes 100,000 cases. How the White House is preparing for a second wave in the fall. Plus, lower than expected turnout at President Trump's rally this weekend, did teenage social media users trick campaign staff? And how a Chicago pizzeria that closed due to COVID-19 fired up its ovens to help out in the pandemic. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Gloria the baby hippo took her first tentative steps into the deep pool in her enclosure. This is at Francis Boval Zoo today. Born on June 7th, Gloria, named after the hippo in the DreamWorks movie Madagascar, weighed 38 kilograms when she was born after an eight-month pregnancy, her mother's first, and became the only baby hippopotamus in France, according to the zoo. A pretty touching moment there. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go to Gary. He's got a final check of our forecast. Gary? It's like she's doing it in slow motion. Well, uh, we've got some showers out there tonight. There is a flash flood watch in effect until 7 p.m. for Grant County and areas to the southwest in Iowa. But uh, I think that will probably be allowed to expire because you can see the heavier showers are now moving east of there, not even seeing a lot of lightning across Wisconsin. So uh, the rain chances will be coming to an end with time. You can see the severe weather threat highest farther to the south in Illinois. Temperatures right now, 70 in Madison, a little warmer to the south and east, a little cooler to the north and west thanks to the showers. Notice the dew point temperature is still in the 60s, but they do drop in the 50s, not far to our north and west. So we'll see a drop in the humidity for tomorrow. Look for an overnight low temperature of 58 as the showers and thunderstorms come to an end. Highs tomorrow, mid-70s with a chance for some afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms. But look for summer weather to return by the weekend. Well, we are back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. The CBS Evening News coming your way next.